So hey Tim, so we're catching up at PunchCon and you're here to present Catastrophe Games. So it's a pretty long trip actually for you because you had to go across the ocean to come here. And can you present? So this, it's a small publishing company. Very I think the, small. the first game that I got from you was uh, the solo game about Gallipoli. Yeah, the one in Gallipoli. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I wanted to know more about you guys, what you do, and maybe give us an overview of what you're presenting at PunchCon today. All right. Well, Catastrophe Games is a very small company. It's basically me and my partner, Christopher. And our interest is historical games that don't take a great deal of time to play. As I've gotten older, my attention span has gotten shorter. And so some of the bigger games, like some of the really cool games that are here, that are taking all weekend to play, I just really don't have time for that. Now, I think it's great that other people do, but for me, what I was looking for is games that I can go and understand and play in about two hours. So that's what I, that's what I put on there as a limit, is most of our games should start and finish within two hours. That's my goal. So that's the kind of games I'm looking for. I like the historical games. I didn't play war games for years uh, because the war games that I found after, after 30 years in the military, they just didn't seem like they were reflective of what real combat and history was like. But then the modern European game mechanics started creeping into historical games. And I played Academy Games Conflict of Heroes. And I played that and the fact that you could use cards added fog of war to it. And I just thought that was so interesting. So it brought me back in. And then that also brought me in to start talking to Uva and working with Uva. And I started working events at, at, at Academy Games at like Origins and Gen Con and things like that. And I started working part time for them. So I learned a lot about the industry there. And I also realized that it was probably going to be a really long time before Academy Games was ever going to get to any kind of designs that I came up with. So, strangely enough, I had more time to make my own company than I did working for Academy. Yeah. So I started my own company. I wanted to get my game out. My first game that I designed was Zermatt, counterinsurgency in Afghanistan at the smallest scale. But I also realized there's a lot of moving pieces, a lot of components to Zermatt. So I said, you know, I don't know if I'm ready as my first game to be such a complex game to create. So I looked around BGG and saw some of the contests and Joe Schmidt had an interesting title, the Gallipoli game, and the landing uh, Gallipoli. And so I looked at that and I thought, well, I'll test my teeth on this one. So I. We did a Kickstarter, we launched that, we got that game going, and then I was going to do Zermont next. This is how things go. So then Robin David said, hey, I've got this interesting game called Judean Hammer, and I looked at that and said, well, that's a lot easier to publish than Zermont. So we did that one, and then I had another person contact me and say, hey, this is an interesting game that I've made, which was the USS Laffey. So I looked at that and like, that's really cool too. So we published that one. And then we finally got to Zermatt, which is why I started the company. So yeah. now that I've gotten four games done, I'm like, well, I should probably keep going. So, uh, so we kept going. We did Stonewall Uprising. We did Fall Blau, which has been super popular. We just finished the Kickstarter for Crisis in Korea, which is a game, des games designed by Sebastian Bay. So we got two micro games in one box, uh, Loose Nukes and Crisis in Korea. And so that's been fun and that we should have that one, should start printing that very soon. We're just waiting for our funds to come from Kickstarter. And then the next one is designed by this young man, Tim, and he's explaining his game, so I'm not gonna interrupt it, but this is Arabian Struggle which is describing the, the conflict that created modern Saudi Arabia. So that's a fascinating game based off of Judean Hammer's system. And Tim took that, modified it, add two or three players, which is really interesting, added Imperials as non-player factions, which is fun, and 
added a couple other tweaks to it. So really fascinating game there. And then I'm also showing off my next design, which is True Command. And this is my take on Division Command. I call it True Command because a lot of war games previously when they'd done Division Command would be this big sprawling map that would have a thousand counters on it and you would manage down to the company the platoon level. But True Command, if you're a Division Commander, is you've got command of the brigades or regiments that work directly for you. And that's it. So you tell them what to do and then they tell their subordinates. So I don't really need to show a hundred or a thousand counters. I just need to show the main units here. Yeah, in a way, it's more realistic because it's closer to what is the actual experience of the decision right. maker at that level. Exactly. Which is sometimes a bit weird when games are called simulation and you're actually taking the role of a quartermaster. Yes. Uh, yes. Like, and, uh, and, and you're actually taking the role of multiple different people and you're not actually simulating a specific position in the military. You're actually doing so many things, which is very unrealistic. Yes, and well, and the trick is you can easily go down the rabbit hole of simulation. And what I wanted to do is focus on what it's like to be the decisions that a commander needs to make. So with that, you've got your units your, that you command, you have scouts out there, they're blocks. So as you're moving that, there's a lot of opportunity for misdirection initially. The very first thing you do is you're given a mix of missions. And then you're going to, at random, draw a mission, and that's going to be your mission. Not only that, but if you have an easy mission, you have a smaller, you have a smaller order of battle. So you don't know what the other person is, so there's an opportunity to go back and forth there to show the confusion as you're trying to, trying to get your mission done while you're trying to figure out what the other guy's intent is. Yeah. So a lot of the game at the beginning is a little sparring back and forth with scouts. You're trying to suss out what the other guy's mission yeah. is. Because if you can figure that one out, then you know how to deploy your forces. I really like Fog of War. Yeah. So This is I, what I find very interesting about this game is I love Fog of War and I think that not many board war games do it very well. And this looks like I'm... I'm, well, I'm gonna not like... going to say that this does it very well, but we're trying awfully hard. Yeah. So right off the bat, you don't know what your mission is. You get that, you discover that. And then the other person, you don't know what theirs is. And so you may have to go half the game before you figure that out. You do get to choose part of your victory points. So between accomplishing your mission and trying to get your, your own chosen victory condition, which is the implied task, these are the only victory points. So right here, this scenario, it's day two of Barbarossa. The Germans are invading Russia. So the Germans are trying to take bridges across the river. The Russians are trying to defend it. So that determines this, right off the bat, determines how many bridges you're trying to take. And then you can watch and see what the other guys are doing, what kind of units they have. And that tells you, gives you an idea then what kind of mission they might have. Yeah. And you're also watching what they're doing because you can choose that other secondary mission. Yeah. And you're watching to see what they're doing to see an idea of what they're trying to get accomplished there. So there's that. The next ad advent for some fog of war is the turn order is you're drawing that from the bag. Half of them are German, half of them are Russian. And then there are also three black cubes they shorten the round. Yeah. So as soon as the third one comes up, the round's gonna end. You can go at least 10, 10 turns, but you don't know how long the round is. You don't know how many turns you're gonna get each round. So that leaves the player with some tough choices. Yeah, that's really interesting. You have a bit of a push your luck element. You never know when it's gonna end and right. everything. Yeah. So if you have like, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, but you watch and it's halfway through the turn, yeah. or halfway through the round, and you haven't had many turns, then you're like, do I really want to go for a three-step thing or do I just do the simpler one because I know I can get that done. And is this uh, True Command game going to come with multiple scenarios or it's going to be a single map or how is it going to be packaged? So I've been told that this has to be published next year yeah. because so many people said, I want to see this game out. 
that I will be publishing this game next year. I just don't know how many maps and scenarios yeah. I have. What I think would be really interesting is you look at how the game is played at the very first part of the war against Russia, against the Soviet Union, because what I try to simulate in there and a couple other aspects is just how chaotic the Russian leadership was because of all the purges that the Soviet officer corps was decimated. So what they have left are not very good. So not only do you have units on the map marching around, but each unit represented here also has a commander. And so the commanders can be very bad with a one star, or they can be very, very good with three stars. Yeah. When you go into combat, you're gonna have the firepower of the unit, which is very similar across the, the two armies initially. But you also have the commander die, but if you're a very good commander, you get your choice of other dice. So you could pick the assault die because you want to cause a lot of damage to the other unit. You could do the maneuver die because you really want to be in charge of the hex after the battle. You can do the protection die because you're worried about the damage he's going to cause to you. Or you do the fire support, which is the best overall yeah. support mechanism. If you're defending on terrain, you also get a terrain die that can help you out as well. So you get the choice of which dice to add if you've got a good commander. So that adds some, you can decide, I really want to protect things and I got to get that hex. So you're going to choose these dice. A poor commander just has, just has their dice and the commander. Yeah. And regarding production, so Catastrophe Games traditionally had uh, the system that you see with Volenspiel, for example, of like, I think it's Blue Panther or, or yes, a competitor. We, use, we both yeah. use Blue Panther. Yeah, and the idea is, do you think you're going to shift to uh, managing your own uh, production and not having that print-on-demand on model? So, or do you think that this is going to evolve or you're going to stay with that model for going forward? We are moving to a hybrid. Okay. So some of our games, like an older game like Gallipoli, that game sells every year, but it doesn't sell that many copies each yep. year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to print that with Blue Panther with Steve, and we'll have, say, we'll print off 100 when we need it, and I've got it at a warehouse now, because some of my games, like the next version of Fall Blau, the next game in that series that Martin Melbertus is, is producing, Bagration, probably going to come out this fall. I'm thinking that one we're probably going to produce 500 copies of. Yeah. So that one we're going to have and there at the warehouse as well. Yeah. So we're shifting. Some of these games will be, I guess, traditionally printed. Yeah. And then the others will continue to use Blue Panthers print on demand, but we're printing in batches. Yeah. So whatever that is. That's okay. What we're it's to. hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Hybrid. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay, but well, that's really cool. So what's coming up next? So Fall Blow was your probably one of your biggest success, you would say? Or Fall Blow, you're saying? Yeah. That has a lot of sales. My two biggest sellers are Zermatt and Stonewall Uprising. Okay. Oh yeah, Stonewall Uprising. How could I forget? Oh, did yeah. you forget that? Yes. Um, both of those Stone or Zermatt, interestingly. I signed a contract with another publisher for them to print that yeah. because they feel that they can get, they think that they can sell that through their, through their channels at numbers many times what I've been able to sell. Yeah. So I'm going to give them a chance and if that works out then that will be, it was an offer I could not refuse. Okay. Can we know which publisher it is? Not yet. Okay. They are not a traditional board game publisher. So they are uh, they are dipping their fingers into this and they will see how this goes. And if this goes well with Zermatt, they would like to see others down the line. Like I've been working on Solder City yeah. in Iraq, but they're also interested in seeing a Vietnam War based yeah. uh, and also a Philippines insurrection based. So. You may be seeing that down the road in one form or another. Um, and then going back to Stonewall, it's been popular enough that we're looking at that as doing traditional printing as well. Yeah. So we are looking at uh, printing that potentially in the fall um, and then shifting from 
the easier to make, you know, a series of small maps and boards to one big board like a normal printer would do and has shifting all of the Stonewall games onto that. So we're in this like transitions from going pure print on demand to this hybrid model and we're choosing some of those games, previous games to to bring up to the new level as well. Cool, but well, that's exciting. Thanks for taking the time and see you soon. Sounds good. Bye. So you're just gonna hold it the whole time? Yeah. Okay. All I'm right. really good.